This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... Well, he said it. Ron Paul is America's de facto leader of the opposition. In an early 2010 video broadcast, he used the term blood flowing in the streets. Of course, he was talking about how all of us can help prevent that from happening. But it's already happening in Greece. And now the mainstream media is buzzing with the burning question. Will it happen here? And I think it's appropriate for each of us in the liberty movement and each of you in the government to be asking ourselves, what are we going to do to help prevent that and if it starts, what are we going to do to help limit it? Well, what I've tried to do, or one of the things I've tried to do, that I hope you are doing, is to show people one of the alternatives to violence. Civil disobedience. And it really is kind of like the Matrix. You can't be told what it is. You have to be shown. Simply refusing to follow certain government orders or openly violating certain laws that are unjust. More recently, I've tried to show people something else that works well. Another peaceful option for limiting the government. A bit. You know the uh, tool I'm talking about. You're looking at a picture of one. No, I'm not a tool. I'm talking about the video camera. There's a reason I changed my site's motto to don't get mad, get video. I'm hoping to remind the frustrated Americans out there that you make government smaller by being victimized by it and publicizing the victimization process. This takes a lot steadier nerves than throwing down with a deputy but it actually helps. It really does more good than harm. For all the Joe Stacks out there who are plotting revenge against the government, well, I hope that there are some who have at least seen this motto, don't get mad, get video, and maybe rethought. Maybe there's some act of violence out there that hasn't been committed, maybe not necessarily because of me stopping it, but because of somebody showing them how to peacefully resist the government. Anyway, if a conflict does break out in the U.S., I hope that at least a few thousand uh, of the people who might be on the anti-government side have seen what I'm doing and what other peaceful people are doing and imitate that uh, rather than falling into the first American Revolution trap. So my role in the early days of a conflict, should one break out, would be to try and help limit its scope. But of course, so much of what I've been talking about for the last couple of minutes is, you know, trying to restrain uh, people who are sympathetic, uh, you know, who, who kind of agree with me on a lot of things. But we liberty activists probably also need to talk about what we can do to help restrain the government. What will you be able to do to help restrain the government if things are in a state of chaos? I just hope it's something that you'll think about and plan for and be ready to do, ready to do uh, even if two-thirds of the assets you'd normally have at your disposal are unavailable. My own expectation for myself is that I would probably be treated sort of similar to the way the independent media was treated in Serbia during the Yugoslav Wars. The Wars of Independence, maybe I should say. Now, the Serbian non-government media was basically uh, treated differently depending on the year and the person. They were shut down intermittently, killed intermittently, uh, or allowed to broadcast freely sometimes. Now, and bear in mind, when I talk about Serbian independent media, I'm not really, it's not independent media in the same sense of U.S. independent 
media in the modern day. I'm just talking about their old version of talk radio or their newspapers that weren't directly owned by the government. Anyway, so my role in a conflict of that type might be to be a political prisoner or to just continue broadcasting depending on the arbitrary whims of Washington. But I know I have a lot of viewers who are government people, so I think it's time to ask you the same question that I've asked myself and my fans. What are you going to do that is going to help limit conflict in the United States? Should one begin? And what are you going to do to try and make sure that one doesn't? Well, you know by now that crackdowns on the harmless don't accomplish that goal. And these transparent entrapment attempts uh, with uh, you know, trying to turn uh, churches into militias and then arrest them all. What's with that? Shooting up uh, caged dogs in people's houses. How's that going to help? Stealing reporters' cameras and fining people for building their kids' tree houses. Are you part of anything like that? Is it possible you might become party to something like that in the next few years? A lot of the future, the future of peace, is going to rest on people like you. Are you going to do what you can to limit the harm that you're causing to harmless people? Of the problem, do not be a part. Don't follow orders, follow your heart. New Hampshire's State House, among the least bad governing institutions on earth. But even here, legislators plot theft and destruction. However, they don't do it without opposition. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance stands in their path and stands ready to train you in the ways of the Citizen Freedom Lobby. Visit nhliberty.org to get involved. Like a fool, I whine. Wait! 